Okay, so the first thing we can do here is take this front uh, plastic off. There's two screws here. Got a bunch of these little these little guys. Then we can take this panel off. Don't forget these screws that are right here. Okay, now let's take off the wheel. Before we do that, let's take off our brake calipers. Take out this little 8mm uh, bolt that holds on the bracket for the speedometer. There's also one up here. And the bracket here for the brake line can also come off. Let's finish with our brake calipers. You can bungee these back, get them out of the way. Crash bars are great for that. And then we can take this front tire off. Now there's a little square washer on the other side of this one, this bracket, and it's the same thing on the other side that you don't want to lose. This little thing right here. You don't want to lose that. And it's the same thing on the other side. Now you may not have to do this, but these things are actually a really good idea. Something on your fork to protect them from chips and stuff like that. It really keeps them in a good condition and keeps your dust seals and your fork seals uh, from, from getting worn out sooner. I forget what it's called, but really anything that can just come around here and protect this. Good idea. Now there is one of these on the other side. However, don't take that one off quite yet because we're going to pull this fork out before we take the fender off. At this point you want to loosen these, that one and right there, the top of these before you loosen these pinch bolts. I'm trying to do this with one hand here. There we go. And then also this one up here. Once that's done, you can loosen these two. You don't have to take them all the way out. And then this will slide right out. And then go ahead and take off the other bolt on the other side of the fender. Loosen the top. Right. <laughs> Alright, so now we need to open up the fork. We loosened this before we took it off of the bike. And before we open up this, there's the, there's the bolt down here that needs to be loosened first. Alright, that's loose. Don't take it out yet though. Get yourself a rag and put it over top of this. That way when it comes off it doesn't go flying. Alright. Okay, so we can just set these out in the order that we take things out in. We got that, we've got a spacer. A washer. And then the spring. Now we can finish removing this. Now with a small screwdriver, pull off your dust seal. Then pull it apart. <clears throat> 
maybe you can pull it apart a little less aggressively than what I just did. I thought it was going to be harder to get out of there than that. Okay, I'm going to get these all cleaned up and uh, we'll start putting it back together with the new pork seals and dust seals. Okay, so everything is clean now. We're going to put it back together opposite of how we took it apart. And as we do, we'll lubricate some of these parts with uh, some new pork oil. Then we can temporarily put this bolt back in. Now this can be a pain in the butt to get in there. So if you put this washer on there. Now they say that you can use a piece of PVC, but the V-Strom's fork is a little too big. They don't make a piece of PVC pipe that actually fits right in here like it does on some of the other forks. But if you take one of the, if you just take a coupling, I don't know what size this is, it has an inside diameter of an inch and five eighths, and you cut off one end of it, and then cut a little slot in the end, you can slide that over top and use that. And use another piece of PVC to drive that in there. Now you can put on the new oil seal. So you can see that there's these little dots on here. That part is going to go up. You, you actually can see that if you take the dust cap off, that's what you'll see. You don't want to put it on upside down like that. You want to put it on just like that. Get a little bit of grease on this. And then use a Ziploc bag. Put it over the end like that. I just cut the Ziploc part off of it. Slide that right over there. Put our pin back in, and then the dust seal. Now we're going to put the new progressive suspension in here. Also need to put the washer on, and the spacer that was in there does not work. It is too short, but progressive did supply a PVC spacer, so we're going to use that. Now the cap has to actually be modified very slightly. This pin has to be changed from this pin to one of these pins. I believe it's because of the size of the PVC. And so then we can put that cap back on. Okay, so that's only going to be put in there temporary. We still got to put the oil in there. So now we're going to torque down uh, this bolt in here. But first, we're going to take it out and put some Loctite on it. I didn't have an Allen key that was hooked up to a socket, so I found an extra one and cut it off. It's a six millimeter, then use a six millimeter socket on there. In order to get in here and torque this down, Alright, so now we can take this back off. Okay, so the book says 18.5 ounces or 143 millimeters down. So we're actually going to check both just to make sure. Get air bubbles out of there. 
That looks just right. Now it's important to note that on the V-Strom, the tight coils go down. The information that comes with the progressive spring says that it doesn't matter whether this is down or this is down. But on the V-Strom, the service manual specifically says that the tight coils go to the bottom because the old springs actually have somewhat of a progressive denture to them and these tight coils specifically go down. So I'm going to do the same thing. These are going to go down. It seems to go against all logic not to. So at this point we can put a progressive spring in, our washer, spacer, and cap. That's it for that one. I'm going to do the other one, then we'll put them back on. Alright, so you want to make sure that you've got the right fork on the right side. Um, these little indents right here where it's got the little step, those will go to the outside because that's where your brake lines will hook up and everything. And you'll also have, you, you've got your, num your part numbers on the inside of your fork here. That goes to the inside. You'll be able to see that. So that'll go to the inside. These go to the outside. We'll go ahead and put them on. Slide them right up on in there. Make sure that you've got your, your wrench handy and just tighten these down temporarily. All right, so we got one of them on. Now we're gonna put our fender back on. Now we can slide the other fork up in there. Temporarily tighten a pinch bolt to hold it there. And now we can connect the other side of the fender. And I gotta keep my hand right there to keep that focused, but when you put these back on the bike, you want the top right there, flush with this part here. Not here, but right there. Okay, so now I've loosened it just enough to where I can move it. Just slightly, but it won't fall out. And we're just going to line the top of that up just perfectly. Right there. Tighten it back up again. And we'll do the same to the other side. Oh, that looks perfect right there. Okay, so now we're going to tighten up the lower pinch bolt as well as the upper pinch bolt and the cap of our fork and torque them down to 16.5 pounds. Okay, now before you go any further, these little nut and washer things go on the inside of the fender here. So you got to reach up inside here and get them seated. They've got a little spot in there that they, that they rest inside. There it is. And go ahead and just get those tightened right down. So also get the one on this side as well. Now we can put the front tire back on. It's always a good idea to clean off and put some grease, some fresh grease on your axle pin here. It'll save you a headache next time. Go ahead and torque this down, 47 foot pounds. Don't tighten your pinch bolt yet though. Please. And we'll go ahead and put our brake calipers back on. These are torqued to 28 foot-pounds. Go ahead and put the clamps back on the speedometer cable. Now before we tighten up this pinch bolt, you'll see that there's a little bit of play in this fork. We need to get on the bike and compress these forks so that it can kind of find where it wants to sit. Wow. 
And now we can go ahead and tighten up this pinch bolt to 16.5 pounds. So all you gotta do is put the fairings back on and uh, you're done. I'm actually going to leave them off because I got a whole bag of hoses to change. So I'm not done yet. Coolant change and changing the coolant hoses and stuff, that's gonna be coming up um, shortly. And uh, oh yeah, and that, that's going to be a kid's project bike. So if you're interested in that, that's going to be coming up too. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.